Asia for us uh, has a number of very specific elements. So let's take China out of Asia for the moment. Then Asia has a more developed and a developing part. Uh, developed part is Japan, mainly Japan and South Korea. It seems to be growing. Uh, there is uh, robust underlying stability uh, in steel use in, in, in both these countries, but nothing explosive. So it's not growing very fast and it is to a large degree dependent on exports to developing Asia. And developing Asia to a large degree consists of what happens in Southeast Asia. And uh, this area is a very large net importer at the moment supplied by uh, both Japan and, and South Korea, but also supplied by China. And uh, demand for steel in this region seems to be growing and going apace. We think it will continue in a, in a positive sideways growth rate uh, with a total steel use of somewhere, or steel imports actually, of somewhere around 60 million tons uh, on, on any given year. China as an as a element of uh, the Asian steel economy is a very important element and is going through very specific adjustments at the moment, largely driven by efforts to rebalance their economy more from, a, from a, an investment-led economy to a consumer use economy. Uh, and that has given rise to a reduction in steel use in the investment environment. Secondly, uh, in China there is presently an oversupply of, of housing stock, of apartments, and therefore construction activity has declined or stabilized to a large degree. And as a result of this, China last year, and we expect this year and also next year, is using less steel than in the past. But by next year, we think this process will have worked itself through the system, and then we may begin to see some growth in Chinese steel use again.